And welcome back. Well, women have different reasons for wanting breast enhancement surgery. No matter what your reason is, educating yourself on the newest types of implants is key. Dr. Daniel Butts from Butts Plastic Surgery joins us today to show us advantages of some newly introduced implants. Great to see yeah, you. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for having me. Here. I'm very what excited. Is, absolutely. One of the things we've learned over the years is that uh, breast surgery um, augmentation in particular is one of the most popular, most mm -hmm. common surgeries that plastic surgeons perform. That's correct. It's technically the second after liposuction, but it's, you know, over 300,000 are done every year. Yeah. It's continuing to increase in popularity every year. So sometimes it's cosmetic, um, but other times do you work with women who've had breast cancer? Absolutely. Um, I do a lot of breast reconstruction and implants are probably used in 80% of those. Um, so it's a very common reason to use implants as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, how about you? Now you're a Wisconsin yep. guy? Yeah, I grew up in, you know, just outside of Green Bay. I went to medical school here at the MCW. And I spent six years at the University of Chicago for my residency in plastic surgery and one year in San Francisco uh, in a facial plastic fellowship. And then my wife and our three small children came back here to be closer to you know, friends and family and just back home. So it's been great to be home. Yeah, it's great. welcome. I always think it's wonderful when people um, are from an area and maybe they even go off to get educated or go to medical mm -hmm. school like you did, but bring their talent and their skills back mm -hmm. home is kind of a wonderful thing. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about breast implants and sort of how they've changed over the years. Because I think there was a time that a lot of people are familiar with, maybe quite a long time ago, where people were really nervous about certain implants. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, so implants first kind of came into the market in the 60s and they were very thin shelled. The, the gel inside was very viscous. So if it ruptured, which was kind of common at the time because it wasn't, they weren't as durable, uh, the gel could kind of go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, 60 years, you know, fast forward 60 years, the implants are kind of all these gummy bear cohesive gel. Yeah, and it's so a much thicker skin, much right? Much thicker um, capsule. So the, the rupture rate after 10 years is, you know, 7%. What's nice, we can actually cut this in half. No way. Oh, I got to see. Oh, I'm going to hold it. I need to help. Okay. I won't like cut your Juice all, all over? No, it doesn't <laughs> go oh. anywhere. So it kind of okay. comes out, but it's not going to spill. Oh. oh, wow. Okay, now kind of open that to camera so we can see. It Let's totally a, is like a. So it just, it, it maintains, oh, wow. it's form see? stable. That's so you almost wild. end up with two different you know, So what pieces. kind is that? What is that? This is, is a Natrell, um, this is one of the older models. And the newer, what they did recently with, in 2015, they released the Inspire line. And basically what they started doing is they filled the implant more, so there's less of the rippling. Oh. Um, and then over the next subsequent years, in 2016, they released the Cohesive. This? Yep, and then the Soft Touch. So this one is a more cohesive gel, so it's okay. even a little bit firmer if you yeah. feel it. it okay. is firm. And this is kind of a Goldilocks, it's kind of right in between. And the benefit of having the more cohesive gel is there's less rippling. Uh, so for patients who have thinner skin, or especially reconstructive patients who have very little tissue kind of covering the implant, you get less of the rippling and kind of the implant showing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, versus the older, you know, this is a saline implant, it's essentially, you know. Oh, it's, there, you can yeah. see the water, like almost. Oh, the, this is the old fashioned this is one? A, well, this is just a saline implant, which is still used, but not, you know, 5% of augmentations are performed with a saline implant, so not very commonly used. Um, and what about this one here? This looks very different. So that's a form, uh, that's a shaped, uh, anatomical okay. shaped implant. Okay. So Teardrop. teardropped, exactly. So it has the same gel as this, so it's again cohesive. Um, and I tend to preserve, reserve to this for. So you can see it. Yeah. Keep your hand there. there you go. Reserve it for very certain cases where again, very you know small amount of volume or skin kind of covering it or reconstructive mm -hmm. patients where they really want that natural appearance. You know, I always wonder because um, if people have the unfortunate circumstance of having breast cancer and having a breast or both removed, is it is it sometimes the case that they with reconstruction and healing, that they actually are happier with their breasts after the procedure than before they had cancer? It depends on what you're starting with, uh, but for a lot of patients, especially as they age and breasts droop, they become, you know, they lose a lot of volume. Uh, so with breast reconstruction, we're able to, you know, restore that volume, lift the breast, uh, and really, you know, give them a relative, pretty nice outcome, especially if we can spare the nipples. It's really, uh, you know, the new nipple sparing mm -hmm. techniques, it's very, a very good outcome. Yeah. And there's actually a newer technique that's kind of been de developed over the last five years of putting the implant on top of the muscle instead yeah. of underneath the pre-pectoral breast reconstruction, uh, which diminishes a lot of the post-operative pain and shoulder kind of dysfunction that's a little bit more traditional with putting it underneath the muscle. Mm -hmm. Do people get a lot of choice when they come to you or is it really you kind of talking to them, figuring out their anatomy and what's best for them? Well, it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, for augmentation, the great thing about this line is there's over 600 implants you can choose from. Um, I wouldn't even so, know what to do. Right, there's, yeah. there's <laughs> five, five different projections, so how, you know, how much projection or profile comes off the chest wall. Then there's a varying degree of width, which is really determined on your individual chest wall width. Mm -hmm. You don't really want to violate that too much. And then the actual fill of the implant. So there's a lot of different options. It's really customized to the patients, what, how, 
how large they want to be, what their anatomy can kind of handle. Mm -hmm. um, and so kind of discussing, you know, determining the goals and kind of what, you know, we kind of come to a decision together about what they kind of are looking for. Well, and to Tiff's point, I, I wonder, too, if someone, if you look at someone and they say, oh, I want to be this size or I want this type of change, can you say by looking at them and giving them input, here's what I think is realistic for you or might really look nice and kind of guide them through the process? Because if you have all those choices, I wouldn't know what to ask Right, for. and that's, that's why, yeah, you definitely, I mean, they're helping guiding things. You know, I, I don't expect you to pick from one of, of 600 implants, but, yeah. then, you know, we narrow things down based on your anatomy so there's only just certain things we can and cannot do mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is based on kind of what you're starting with um, so that you know but it gives us a lot of different options to kind of give you get you as close to kind of what you're looking for as we can real quick because we're out of time but you know to just kind of dispel myth can breast can breast implants cause cancer no they do not cause breast cancer uh, but just briefly the one issue with these is that the texture is a newer thing called breast implant associated acute large cell lymphoma which is a mouthful Basically, it's an over-response of the immune system to the texture. Yeah. It's very rare, 1 in 6,000 to 1 in 30,000, depending on what you know, kind of paper you're looking at. It's a little higher in Australia for some reason. Hmm. Um, but for a lot of people, that's why I often just kind of steer away from that, because they just don't want to have to worry about that. It's, real, yeah. it's low risk, but still, it's just something you don't want to worry about. But an important so. myth to dispel yeah. is yeah. that mm -hmm. they do not cause cancer. Yeah. It would be great for people to have a consultation. Right now, you actually have a spring promotional event that's $6,000 for silicone breast augmentation, which is a lot less than I've heard quoted in, in other publications and such. You so get I both for that? Yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, both. <laughs> It's a great promotion, <laughs> a great spring promotion. You know, spring is a good time for breast augmentation. Also, on top of that, you can get a free, you know, Botox treatment, of, you know, frown line area. Um, and yeah, I think it's a good, You're great good to go. Awesome. Yeah, that's fantastic. Except for the summer. So the Botox and the augmentation, six thousand dollars. It's a wonderful spring promotion. Great thing to do a consultation to. Your office is located in Brookfield. It's on West North Avenue. It's one three eight zero zero West North Avenue. The phone number is two six two seven one seven four thousand, or you can go to buttsplasticsurgery.com. It's b u t z plasticsurgery.com. Thank you so Excellent. much. Thank it was you very great much. educational yeah. information. We appreciate it.